There was a man who had fine houses, both in town and country, a deal of silver and gold plate, embroidered furniture, and coaches gilded all over with gold. But this man had the misfortune to have a blue beard, which made him so frightfully ugly that all the women and girls ran away from him. One of his neighbours, a lady of quality, had two daughters who were perfect beauties. He desired of her one of them in marriage, leaving to her the choice of which of the two she would bestow upon him. They would neither of them have him, and each made the other welcome of him, being not able to bear the thought of marrying a man who had a blue beard. And what besides gave them disgust and aversion was his having already been married to several wives, and nobody ever knew what became of them. Bluebeard, to engage their affection, took them with the lady their mother and three or four ladies of their acquaintance with other young people of the neighbourhood to one of his country seats, where they stayed a whole week. There was nothing then to be seen but parties of pleasure, hunting, fishing, dancing, mirth and feasting. Nobody went to bed, but all passed the night in playing tricks upon each other. In short, everything succeeded so well that the youngest daughter began to think the master of the house not to have a beard so very blue, and that he was a mighty civil gentleman. As soon as they returned home, the marriage was concluded. About a month afterwards, Bluebeard told his wife that he was obliged to take a country journey for six weeks at least, about affairs of very great consequence, desiring her to divert herself in his absence, to send for her friends and acquaintances, to carry them into the country if she pleased, and to make good cheer wherever she was. Here, said he, are the keys of the two great wardrobes, wherein I have my best furniture. These are of my silver and gold plate, which is not every day in use. These open my strong boxes, which hold my money, both gold and silver. These my caskets of jewels. And this is the master key to all my apartments. But for this little one here, it is the key of the closet at the end of the great gallery on the ground floor. Open them all. Go into all and every one of them, except that little closet which I forbid you, and forbid it in such a manner that if you happen to open it, there will be no bounds to my just anger and resentment. She promised to observe very 